So first, we have electronic vehicles and uh, ever-growing autonomy uh, in vehicles, autonomous mobility, and this all comes down to uh, the need for centralized computing. Centralized computing means that from uh, a myriad of ECUs that we had in the car, now we have, let's say, two domain controllers, three domain controllers, and even converging towards a single, single computer for the car. Uh, this situation, of course, uh, brings about the, uh, the software people on board. So software and electronics, of course, so hardware and software. Hardware as in uh, computers, like computer hardware and this kind of things. And uh, software and software people, very, very complex software stacks with millions lines of code starts to engulf basically everything. And this is uh, the situation that we maybe didn't talk this much at, at this conference, but when we, when we look worldwide uh, at what's happening in autonomous mobility, uh, the keyword is software, definitely, and, and all the algorithms that need to process all the signals from all the sensors. Uh, software companies are actually new tier twos, and we also have new tier twos in terms of these, these additional controllers that are being developed. And the existing Tier 1 companies uh, open up new departments uh, dealing only with software and electronics and bring in many, many people from previously consumer and software industries that have not had any previous experience in automotive developments. Uh, one, one interesting insight that currently uh, there are 250,000 new automotive software job ads in USA alone. Uh, and these are the ads that uh, are being answered to all software people. So not only those that have experience in automotive, so they mostly do not have experience in automotive. And most of these people come out from universities that are not taught anything about automotive. These are like general software, computer science things where the V model is only, let's say, mentioned once or twice in one or half of the course. Uh, but vehicles are still vehicles. We still have all the safety and all the security requirements. We have all the processes we need to respect and we need to make sure we are compliant and this is why the legislators, of course, are the, as the last ones to be asked. Uh, as I said, most of the electrical engineering, so software engineering schools do not have safety related subjects on the curriculum and this is a big problem. Uh, because if we uh, want to do learning by doing, basically once you have a software guy or a hardware guy inside a company and then you want to uh, uh, make this person understand safety uh, like immediately or through listening to YouTube videos or send him to a workshop of three days or something like this, uh, you will get uh, a person that is even more confused <laughs> as opposed to being able to really, really embark to, to doing something useful. Uh, so uh, yeah, there are different solutions. We can use different fast courses, online materials. Some companies resort to hiring safety managers like, yeah, I should work more on safety. This probably means I need one or two safety people that comes on board. Uh, but the question is, what about the safety culture? And one of, one of the most important things in safety is in fact the safety culture, the understanding of the safety process from the beginning until, until the end in all its phases, what are the inputs, what are the outputs, and then each of the phase in the V model, if we are talking about design, if we are talking about hardware or software or verification, has its specific methodologies that needs to be respected uh, regardless the disruptive culture of the Silicon Valley or, or, or whatnot. Uh, and this is one of the answers that we uh, crafted last year as NIT Academy together with the University of California, San Diego, their Department for Extended Studies. So this is a continuous education program in uh, what is uh, titled here Functional Safety Fundamentals for Automotive. And uh, I'm very proud that my team and myself uh, managed to craft this and this is among the first uh, really complete functional safety education programs uh, there, are, there are on the market. Uh, we are not talking about, uh, let's say, quick programs that, that you can get, let's say, uh, uh, this or that certification with, with the SGS or the quality people or, or, or whatever from that angle. But the programs which really uh, mimic real experience have hands-on exercises uh, in, inside of those programs and allow you really to practice a field before you deeply dive uh, inside, inside some projects. And I will just show you uh, in a bit uh, how, it, how it works. Uh, so functional safety fundamentals for automotive as a program, uh, it starts with a course on systems, functions, and safety. All the courses are designed in an intensive mode. This one starts on the September the 1st 
this year, so the enrollments are currently open. Uh, this course is all about the big picture that is really essential for safety. So usually software people and hardware people think inside out instead of thinking from the big picture. So uh, we here start from the system, en system engineering, of course, as a general uh, field, then dive into the requirements engineering and one of the most common pitfalls currently in the designs because of the bad or non-existent requirements, we have all the problems uh, there are because people don't know who to ask about the requirements and the requirements are not given, they are elicited, etc., etc. So uh, understanding all the key stakeholders and then starting to understand how all this impacts safety, what are all the terminology in safety, hazards, risk, incidents, accidents, then the functional safety and all the functional safety standards terms like um, uh, the uh, safety related system, etc. And then diving into dissection of how the functional safety is designed, what are the safety functions, how those are evaluated um, against the safety standards, what are safety integrity levels, how those are calculated, and even we open up uh, the field of reliability and how you actually meet those ACIL marks. So ACIL marks are not uh, something on paper, some labels, these can be actually calculated, those stem from hazard assessment, etc., etc. So these are like general precursors of safety that, is, that are really applicable both in automotive and in industrial and any other safety critical industry. <laughs> then we dive deeply in how we analyze safety, what are the methods there like FMEAs, FMEDAs, FMEKAs, EDAs and everything else. This course, Safety Analysis Techniques, really gives you hands-on experience on how can you analyze, analyze safety of a system and how you can figure out actually do you have a problem or not regarding some compliance, regarding some figures that you need to meet. Uh, then for specific system design field, we have the course on fault tolerance systems. Uh, this means teaching people how to design systems that will be safer and that might meet the mark. What is the redundancy? What is diversity? And not only in general terms, but exactly how this is mathematically calculated and how we prove that, that the systems, how we can bring, bring up the, 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 the dependability of systems and the safety of systems uh, as such. So this is, this is really, really important course and people are really, uh, let's say, thrilled by having the chance to design different fault tolerance structures and to, die, to design design systems that have this fault tolerance built in. Then of course, uh, apart from all the design and let's say uh, safety uh, precursors, we have the processes and, and, and quality involved. Uh, you probably heard about ASPICE. Uh, this is of course something that is deeply analyzed in this course, automotive quality and project management. Uh, students are actually practicing ASPICE uh, through some project examples and learning what are the inputs and outputs of all the phases and what is the purpose of that and how the process affects the safety integrity of systems and that it is equally important uh, as the design itself and that actually if you didn't follow the process you cannot go back so you, you cannot rewind uh, in time so you need to respect the process from day zero and this is exactly where they can pick up on this topic. And finally once you have all this foundation set up we uh, are speaking in depth about automotive functional safety standards and we believe that only at this point it is actually possible to dissect ISO 26262 and to understand really what it's all about when you know everything before it. And not only this stand standard, we are tackling SOTIF, we are also tackling, tackling some other functional safety standards if, if we have different industries involved here in this conference, we are dealing about automotive. Uh, we also have some electives like functional safety software, how you actually make redundant structures in software, what is MISRA, how it's being checked, what, is, what, you, what you need to do in software specifically when it comes to functional safety and the software chapter of ISO 26262, but not only listing it on paper, but actually practicing all these methods by, by coding, by coding small examples of that. <coughs> Safety verification and validation, how you design uh, correctly uh, the, the, the testing processes, the verification processes, unit tests with appropriate coverage, etc. All these coverage matrix and everything else that is required to really make your safety case in the end. And uh, we uh, are currently uh, crafting a specific flavor of cybersecurity course that we call automotive cybersecurity that shall also bring up the knowledge uh, in this field and also relate it to safety and seeing that it's, it's actually catering to the, to the, to the very sim similar thing in the, in the end of the day. So uh, this being said, uh, anyone enrolling on the September the 1st can go through the complete program, can go through all five of these courses and finish somewhere in, in February. The courses are designed so that you can 
work and learn. So it's mostly in the afternoon. You have some asynchronous parts that you do at home or with your groups uh, with the help of, of, let's say, our instructors that are online. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, this, is, uh, this is one way and this is, let's say, a preferred way. Uh, you can also uh, handpick some of the courses, like starting from the first one, let's say, take one, two, and five, this is also possible, or one, two, four, five, or something like this. <laughs> Different combinations are possible. Uh, UCSD uh, gives the certificate, Functional Safety Fundamentals for Automotive, in case these five are completed. You don't need to complete everything in the first year. You can complete it some in the first year, some in the second year, etc. But it is it is very good that that you can you can also select the courses and based on what you believe your knowledge currently is. 